Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video, taking time off from actually doing the raid to talk about what's going to be coming up for the upcoming uh, month in fake Grand Order. So, it's going to be 2024, so that means we're actually moving ahead a year and going to look into January. <clears throat> so here's what it was like on the JP side of the game. Uh, and we'll see how it ends up coming for us, because we're now into a very weird part of <laughs> the Fugo history because of all the, the COVID stuff going in. So let's start. First things first, obviously we're going to have some kind of countdown, and a countdown has already kind of begun on the NA side. Actually, I can go up here and look at it right here. Uh, I don't think there's anything attached to it at all, but just to be 100% sure of it all, I'll look at it. Yeah, all we have is like a countdown campaign, which you can currently log in to get a bunch of golden apples and uh, a single summon ticket. And there's also a social media campaign. If we somehow get to 20,240 reactions, we'll get 20 million, 24,000 QP and Little Lion's Dance, which is an SR craft essence. Uh, which, good luck. I don't think we were almost able to... I think we, were, we almost had difficulty re reaching the last... Thing that they set so I doubt that this happens but we'll see uh, it would be nice to get because this is a very cute uh, craft essence I'm sure they would want to give it to us otherwise why would they <laughs> put this out it's not like when uh, back in the day where Dokkan did a thing where they're like we'll give everyone 777 Frieza's if you do this uh, and we never were able to do it because it was an unattainable goal but anyway uh, that's Da Vinci stuff. We'll look into the New Year's campaign because it's going to start with the New Year and that's what we're going to start with. Obviously, the big thing to start for the New Year is the summon campaign. A Coin Sky of Darkness will be there. Along with what is in theory a limited rate up for servants of, of Skahawk, Arthur Pendragon, uh, Kagekio, Iskandar, Leonardo Da Vinci, and King Asan. That's what it was on JP. Who knows if it will stay that way on NA. But I assume it will stay that way on NA. Why is Arthur here? Not 100% sure. Does he do anything for this year? No. Not really. He's the weakest one on here. Which is kind of amazing. <laughs> it's uh, Maybe I think this might actually be one of the weakest for New Year's. Now that I look at the lineup all fully. But anyway, these are the units that are in theory going to be coming up. With most people really wanting to go for Coin Sky of Darkness. Then, along with this, there will be a Lucky Bag Summoning Campaign, which will cost 15 Quartz, and I have to be very sure to say this, paid Quartz. If you do not use real money, you cannot summon on the GSSR. That's just the way it's going to be. Um, you Also, if you summon on this, you'll get a Holy Grail. And the way that the banners are broken up, it is 14 different banners. Here's how Banner 1 looks like. This is how Banner 2 looks like. Here's how Banner 3 looks like. Here's how Banner 4 looks like. Banner 5. Banner 6. Banner 7. Banner 8. Banner 9. Banner 10. 11. 12. 13. And 14. So, I'm going to be releasing a later video going into kind of detail over which of these I would say would be kind of worth summoning for. But if you just want a quick overview of the big units that are kind of being to be on gssr on the quick offensive np this is the way that they're kind of broken up by is by um np type and also their uh their class specifications so under quick offensive np for the four calvaries that's where you'll find assassin comma for the quick offensive np extra that's where you'll find someone like uh Doman. along with some others probably not on the same level of Doman, but i really do like voyager and dante so i want to bring them up Fair enough. On the Arts Offensive NP, which is the Three Knights, it has this crazy banner, which has Muramasa, and it has Melusain, and it has um, Summer Saber on it as well, along with a lot of, like, in general, very good units, to some pretty okay to good units, to uh, that sure is Saber Shiki. And next, um, under Offensive Arts, the Four Calvary, that's where you'll find um, Summer Musashi. Under the Arts Offenses MP Extra, that's where you'll find uh, Venture Kama, as well as Space Ishtar, Summer Kiara, which this is another banner, which is kind of crazy, because these three are w crazy good units to have, especially <laughs> uh, the raid that was currently going on. Obviously, you won't be able to use her for her now, but she's been in kind of insane. At I have her at MP1 in Bond 6, and I'm able to pretty effortlessly um, 
grind the beast with little to no issues at all. So pretty crazy banner. And the other units are pretty good as well. Uh, Yang is the only one that I'm not 100% sure on, just because I need to actually level up the skills on my Yang to see if she's any useful, but I've never been able to find any use with her. Next, uh, under Buster Offensive uh, NPs, that's where you'll find uh, Ibuki Doji, the Saber version. Under the Buster Offensive for the Three Knights, that's where you can find uh, Gilgamesh, which is a big loved fan favorites. Under Buster NP, uh, Offensive NPs, you'll also, for the full Calvaries, one, they had to separate it because there's so many Buster Offensive Calvaries. That's where you'll find Arjuna Altar, along with Koyanskaya, because she, remember, her NP is offensive, offensive based. Um, two extremely good units, and then this is also a banner that unfortunately has uh, Ilya in it, which is a pretty decent single target caster, which uh, after the most actual recent raid stuff, it would... It, would, it is nice to have a single target caster that you can rely on. Cleopatra, which my girl needs so many buffs, it's not even funny. Hijikata, where I failed to use him in the Ivan raid, which would have made him for the first time ever in the entire years I've had him at NP2, would have been useful to me. Iskandar, which also needs buff. And Mama Rika, who is good and will be getting buffs pretty soon. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag of a GSSR if you go for it. Uh, Buster Offensive MP Calvaries, that's where you're going to find Morgan. Um, under the Buster Offensive MP Extra 1, that's where you can find Oberon. Under a uh, Buster Offensive MP Extra 2, that's where you can find BB Summer. And then under Support MPs, that's where Castoria lives, along with Reigns, Miss Crane, uh, Huan Di, our Mothman, and Van Gogh. That's under the MP1. And under MP2, that one has Super Orion, Scotty, uh, Merlin, Sherlock Holmes, and Himiko. And that's just a very quick overview of the ones that I would consider big ones. There's obviously a lot of good units in the various ones of them. And it would take an entire video dedicated to it to kind of fully break it down. But that's a very quick way of looking at it to say like, hey, these are where these are. Think about it now. And yeah, there'll be other campaigns related to the New Year's. Like everyone who logs in will be given 30 quarts. Three-day login. This is, can also be subject to change just based on NA uh, in general. Um... Crystallized Lore will be there, a Holy Grail for logging in on three days. This is their Lion Cub dance that they got from a retweet campaign where they got 20 million. So yeah, it, I expect this to be able to... <laughs> either way, they'll they'll give it to us regardless of anything, I think. <laughs> Even if we maybe don't make it. Daily mission rewards increase, time limited, and then there'll be other campaigns like all Ember Gathering and Training Fields will be half off AP. Creating super success rate times two, arc uh, one, uh, lost belt number one plus lost belt number two, main quest costs one four AP. Epic of Remnant is not included in this. A coin sky of darkness trial quest, which will feature one ticket. That'll be in there. Uh, some limited missions where you can get some teapots, which would be really nice for the current raid that we're going on. Uh, Lord El Malloy uh, collab limited mission, which is just clear lost belt three, and you'll just get five easy sync quartz. Uh, panel missions. Which you can find Jaguar Warrior and let's go t for Hatsumo Hatsumode. Um, yep, yeah, just a bunch of easy to do quests that will, at the end, after you clear all those missions, you'll get five tickets, a lore, and a CE. Yeah, very easy. Very easy to do. No worries here. New and returning rewards, the Start Dash campaign, which will be updated. Uh, returning rewards campaign. Yep. Da Vinci's Workshop will have the classic stuff as every year, which will be a New Year's Lucky Gift Bag, which you can trade limit once for 20 uh, Mana Prisms, which will give you all the following items right here that you can see. Uh, the Visionary Flames, the Beast Footprints, uh, some 5 EXP cards, 3 Golden Apples, one of each of the code openers for each type, 10, mil 10 million QP and 10k friend points. You can get some Craft Essence EXP cards for fe feature Olga, you can exchange it for 10 tickets and for 30 foes of the three kind. And yeah, a new permanent item for the rare uh, prism exchange. The Kamari is fun too. Uh, yep, it will be a new one to get there. Also, a uh, Skahawk's costume dress will be, the, the, the bunny suit will be able to be uh, obtained from here if you did not get it from the event itself a while ago. And yes, yeah, some game updates apparently. This is where they added the pity system. <laughs> and we already have the new daily quests. So I'll be... Uh, Holy Grail casting. We already have this, I think. 
Yeah, that's uh, tutorial summon improvements. I think we also already have that. So I don't know if they'll put something in here. That's the one thing about getting things early is that when we actually get up to the point where the thing comes out, it's like, well, does that mean that we're just not going to get anything for here? Uh, such as the trials and tribulations of getting a good thing early. But yeah, and then there'll be 2022 Servant Silhouettes. Less fun for us because we already know everyone who was under here. But these are the units that will be featured in 2022. But anyway... That's the New Year's campaign. The Arc, one, the Arc 1 Improvements Part 1 will also be another thing that will be coming up, and that will be where the Tutorial Summon Improvement is coming, along with the sub recommended support improvements, which I think haven't actually come in yet, so there we go. There will be a 1.9 million followers commemoration, which will be whatever it translates to on the NA side. Some kind of campaign for a broadcast of some kind? What did it feature in here? How many quarts did they get in here? Three apples and then 16 St. Quartz. They'll figure out something to do for us. So they'll they'll do some kind of stream so that they can announce Lady Rain's case files. So they can give us some St. Quartz and announce things. A banner featuring Coin Sky of Light. Which if you were going to choose between one of the two Coin Skyas, if you can only summon for one of them, Coin Sky of Light is the priority over Darkness. That's just the way it is. So if you're waiting for Coin Sky of Darkness, she should be here sometime on the 10th, probably a little bit early on the NA side, maybe 9th or something. Who knows? Um, it is a new year, so we'll see how they kind of do the breakdown there, but Coin Sky of Light should be showing up. Next, uh, Arc 1 Improvements Part 2, which will feature Party Max cost readjustments, which, oh, thank God. Uh, very nice. I actually don't know if this is already in here, <laughs> to be fair. Um, we'll see. And then quick start animation skip. I also feel like we already have that. Mm. It's hard to remember with all the things coming out of order to see what has been approved and what is not. Anyway, the Lady Reigns case files rerun will be here. And this is where another raid will be here. Because this is another raid. <laughs> another raid event. Uh, where is the raid to show off that there's a raid coming up? Where are you, Raid? Memories in Onimanagusha? No, these are all the the fights here, but there should be a raid related to this. Let me see. Main quests. X6. Complete. Uh, clear missions. Barbados. There you go. Here's the raid battle. Um, you all have to have cleared Act 10, and then the... There will be this many pillars, which looks like 35 million pillars. Uh, should be very easy to kind of kill. Inside the raid itself, you'll get um, Dragon Reverse Scale drops, Heart of the Foreign God drops, Homunculus Babies, Forbidden Page, Infinity Gear, Ghost Lantern, Unlucky Bone, Dust, Assassin Gems, 200k, uh, 500k QP, and 1.4 million QP. So... Looks like less, <laughs> but to be fair, and less QP, but the materials here are pretty nice. The Heart of the Foreign God, Scales, Homunculus Babies, the Pages, the uh, Infinity Gears, the Bones, the Ghost Lanterns, the Dust. All of it is used a whole bunch in Ascension materials, so it would be nice to kind of grind them up for this one, but this is another one you'll have to uh, wait. It looks like when this released, it was on January 19th, so at least you'll have a couple of days before it actually comes out. Which I assume that this is all broken down in like, yeah, see, this is when, yep, this is when you'd have to get here. So this one started on, see, this drops on, just dropped on 18th. This event started on the 12th and then it came up in the 18th. So that is six days. Okay, about a week or so. Um, just pay attention for when they say when the second part will release and that will let you know to be ready for the raids and the new unit that will be featured here is a Hevestian and that will be featured on the banner on the summoning campaign which features Reigns which is a Reigns is a very very nice support unit I wish I always had Reigns um I think when she released she wasn't that amazing but the strengthenings that they've given her have been really good and makes her a really solid writer support and then there's also another summoning campaign, which this one features um, Waver on it, as well as Estrella. And that's, yeah, that's it. That's going to be oh, also Servant Strengthening, one for Rands, and then another one for Grey, which is nice. 
Uh, and that's going to be the event. The van, the event itself, I believe, is, is a mission event. And these are always a pain in the ass to do. So make sure to keep up to them, especially with a raid be, with, uh, with a raid being on the line here. Make sure you are up to date with your missions, because uh, missions are a big pain to actually go through and do. All right, and then next, more Arc One improvements. You'll see a running theme of many improvements to the game being kind of made. This is when they introduce pure prisms, but we already have pure prisms, so I don't know what they're going to introduce. <laughs> um, but at least it means that we'll get free access to the prison tower quest, which previously you would have to exchange uh, rare mana prisms to unlock. Now it will just be free, and if you spent it, any uh, mana prisms on it, it will be refunded to you via gift box. And then also for anyone who's cleared uh, Cries of the Vengeful Demon in the prison tower quest uh, and cleared Solomon, a challenge quest will unlock, and if you beat that one, you will get three tickets for the first time you beat it. Everyone will get free access to Arjuna and Karna's trial quest. In the Da Vinci shop, they'll add in the costume dress where Arjuna gets his little monkey, and Dantes gets his uh, summer goth outfit, which is very good. Free for players who have cleared London, and then free for players who have cleared E. Plumbrous Minum. And if you just want to get them now, you can also just pay five, I guess, if you don't want to just clear London. If if you're that like stubborn about it, <laughs> I guess you can pay five. But you, it's very easy to clear London and E Pluribus Num. It's not that hard. Anyway, and then there'll be a summoning campaign which features Dantes and Nightingale. Uh, Dantes, I really like a whole bunch. Some people say that you need him to be at least NP2, but I've been able to grind with Dantes for a majority of things, and he's only ever been NP1. And it's been very rare, very rarely does it ever come up that I wished he was maybe NP2 so I could get a little bit more damage out there. But for the most part, I think he's pretty effective at quick grinding at NP1. And there you go. And Dantes, in general, is a cool dude. There's a reason they put him in the fighting game. Anyway, that's where his banner shows up. There will also be an Arjuna and Karna banner. I don't know who's summoning on this, unless you are a big fan of Arjuna's monkey, and you just want that monkey. Uh, they're both free SSRs. <laughs> There's real, literally, at least with Dantes, he's limited, and I understand. Nightingale, not limited, which is why I didn't bring her up at all. Uh, in a similar boat to them, I would suggest just not summoning on it. But if you really want that monkey, then go go for it. Or maybe you're someone who's like, no, I need... I love Karna, I love Arjuna, I need to get that MP5. They never get banners. This is my shot. Good luck to you. Uh, um, Arc 1 Improvements Part 4. Advanced quests are finally going to be joining into the game. Uh, for the advanced quests, this is like a test of skill... Um, where you're going to be doing quests to unlock these quest reward CEs, where these specific CEs increase the drop rate of certain materials. For the, so for this one, it'll be an increase to Void Refuse. Um, and then there will also be a campaign where, first of all, the main interlude where the Merry Christmas from the Underworld would be free. And if you bought it, then you'll get a refund for it. And then it's also one half AP cost for any free quest that drops Void Refuse, obviously, so you can make use of your CE over here which you'll get from doing the campaign. And then there's a summoning campaign tied to this featuring Erish Coggle and Ishtar. <laughs> um, two Rin servants, two very well loved, two very good servants as well. Erish Coggle and Ishtar probably not on the same level that they were when they released, just simply because they've released more units. But they've never been bad. Still very good. I'm still able to do as much grinding as I was able to do with Irish Coggle when I got her recently. And I've been very happy with it. Ishtar has like a stupid 50% attack increase that is on a 3 turn cooldown, which is insane. Yep. At attack 20% up and crit damage up 20% on a 5 turn cooldown. Attack increased by 3 attacks and 3 turns. This is the one. This is the one. 500% chance to grant self a delayed buff attack for one turn. Unstackable increases on attack for one turn after one turn. A 50% attack increase. With Quaint Sky, it's definitely possible to just make use of this almost... You use it one turn, and then you use it the next turn, and it's kind of crazy. Very, 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 very good skill. <laughs> a three-turn cooldown is hilarious. Um, but they are old, as you can kind of tell by the fact that they have like very simple like increase attack and do this. There you go, this 80% chance. This is maybe the one negative I'll say about Ishtar. Is that the second skill is an 80% chance to ignore invincibility and an 80% chance of self-invincibility. And then a 50% MP charge. 
in today's age, she would just get both of these. And that's the one thing I'll say is that maybe they could one day buff it. But other than that, like, her Noble Phantasm, which got buffed on her Latitude, is still very good. Getting 20 crit stars, pretty cool. And yeah, that's it. That's them. Still very much loved, obviously, because they are Rin faces. And they are still very good and still very usable. I want to say the one improvement that Chicago got is that hers is guaranteed, I think. Yeah, her self-invincibility is guaranteed. And then, yeah, yeah. But she doesn't get the chance of getting uh, ignore invincibility um, on her attacks and stuff. But anyway, that's where their banner lives. Keep an eye on it. Should be right here, January 26th. And then, then this is the advanced quest that you'll need to be able to beat. And yeah, uh, this probably will require a deeper look into what the actual fight is when it comes up. But yeah, you can see right here. They're going to make you fight for that CE that gives you a 5% increase in drops. <laughs> You're going to have to fight for it. It is not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it should be it should be beatable. It should be 100% be beatable. Um, and yeah, that's what it's going to be looking like for January to the start of 2024. Um, a little bit... A lot of banners in terms of actual events there's not a lot of events the when the event that is here is uh, the raid and El Malloy and then technically I guess if you want to count getting back this maybe this counts as an award like re getting events but I don't really consider that and then the advanced quest and that's basically it for January but there's a lot of banners now that this is when JP actually got pity, so then they decided to up the rate of banner releases to an insane degree. That's why it's taken me a while to release the video where I say like, hey, here's the thing coming up for the year. Because there's a lot of units coming up for this year. <laughs> coming up for 2024 that I want to do due diligence and kind of talk about them all and figure it out. Uh, and that video will likely take a very, very long time. I had to cut it from the previous video where I talk about the same course that you get for the entire year. So yeah. But yeah, that is uh, looking like what's going to be here for January. Who knows what NA themselves will decide to add. There's definitely plenty of cases where they could add something. Will they add something is a different conversation to have, though. Um, and a deeper one to probably have as well as we get closer and closer to this very weird year that we have here. But anyway, that's what it's looked like for the upcoming uh, month. Thank you very much for watching. If you watched it all to the way to the end, I thank you very much. You can always help by leaving a like. Uh, subscribing to the channel does help it out a whole bunch. And that's going to be it for the video today. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go back to the raid itself and also planning out those videos. And then I think I have to actually go back to my job at some point. But who knows? <laughs> Until next video, which will be here the next day. I wish you guys the best of luck and continue enjoying your holiday. Until we get into the new year. Till next time, everyone, goodbye, peace out, bye.